Hey guys, in this tutorial I want to show you how you can create a this or that filter in the Spaghi R Studio which you can control by leaning your head to the right or the left. So yeah, let's start. Hey again, so let's create this this or that filter here in the Spaghi R Studio. Before we start creating the filter here in the Spaghi R Studio, we have to make sure that we have created our assets we want to use in this filter. So the cards that will appear on the left and the right side of the filter. You can use to create this um, those assets um, yeah, in every program you feel comfortable with, like Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch or Canva. I um, use Sketch to create my assets and yeah, here you have to make sure that you name the assets in the right way and also have the correct order of your assets and I will explain you now um, what to have to keep in mind. So as you can see here, um, I have two rows of, um, yeah, of assets, one red one and a blue one. The reds are for the left side and the blue for the right side. So, and here the important thing is that you name them correctly. So the left side is um, named L01, L02, L03 and the right side is named R01, R02 and R03. And yeah, those are the pairs. So L01 will appear with R02 uh, one at the same time. So yeah, after you have created them, just export them. And yeah, I have created them on a 500 to 500 canvas. So when I import them, I don't have to um, scale the, the planes. We will use them so they are already in the correct scale. So yeah, let's start. As I said, just export them and yeah, save them where you can find them later on. If you don't have any assets now for this, uh, for this project, you can download mine in the description just as the for an example purpose. So yeah, let's start. When you have exported the assets, it's time to import the assets. We will import them as an animation sequence. For this, just go to add assets and, and create an animation sequence. So I will call this first animation sequence left. So after we have created it, just click on it, go to the right hand side and click here on texture and click on new texture. Now we will import all the left textures. So L01 to L04. But of course you can do as many as you want. So you can also do 10 to 20 or even more pairs here. So L01 to L04. Now I click on open and yeah, um, Spargy R will automatically import them as a animation sequence. So now click on texture, go to the right hand side and make sure you set the compression to none. After you have done this, we can add another animation sequence and of course I will call this animation sequence right. So now the same thing again, go to the right hand side click on texture, new texture, and then um, just import all the right assets you want to include in this filter. So after th those are imported, um, same as before, click on it, go to the right hand side and set the compression to none. So next thing is that we create a material for our texture. So add a new assets, material, I will also call this left. Go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat and then select as texture the left animation sequence. Next thing, new material, I will call this right, shader type to flat and texture or the right texture. So um, now we can start setting up our scene. For this we will add a new object to our scene and the first thing is that we add a null object. So this null object is just to control um, the right and the left side um, with one click. And the next thing is to add two new plane objects. So one plane I will call this one left of course, then just duplicate it and this I will call right. So now the two planes are at the same position, but we will change this now. So the left plane goes to the X position of minus 0.07 and the right plane goes to the position of 0.07. Seven. So now they are apart 
and to control them with the height with one um, yeah, parameter just select the left and right plane and drag and drop it into the null object. I will also rename the null object to cards. So now we can just um, yeah, change the position of the cards null objects and I will set this position to um, 0 0.14. So now they are here. Um, I will do um, make them a little bit um, yeah, bigger, both of them. So I will um, yeah, select the left and the right and will set the scale to uh, 1.2 for, for the X and also 1.2 for the Y. So the next thing um, we have to do is of course um, attach the materials to the plane. So the left material gets a uh, left plane gets of course the left material and the right plane gets of course the right material. So now they are already shuffling through. To stop this we are opening our patch editor and then click on the animation sequences. I will um, select both, go to the right hand side and click on the little arrow next to current frames. So now they are um, yeah, in the patch editor and they stopped shuffling through. So now we can start programming our filter here in the, yeah, in the patch editor. We want to, um, yeah, to navigate through the um, answers by nodding our head to, to the left or the right. So for this we need of course a new object, a face tracker objects to get all the information in we need to program the filter. So the next step is after creating the face tracker just drag and drop the face tracker into the patch editor and SparkAR will automatically create those patches for us. So now we have to um, yeah, include a few patches. So I will order them here right and start um, yeah programming this filter in the patch editor. So the first and um, an important patch is the um, head rotation filter. This just um, yeah, gives us the, the pulse if the head is leaned to the left or the right. So <clears throat> for this I will connect the face tracker output here, the face output to the face input of the face rotation. So the next thing is that we add a new if then else patch. So and here we have to um, change the type from number to vector three. This will control the yeah, animation of the two cards. So when I lean the head to the left, the left side gets bigger. So for this um, lean left lean stage to the condition input and when you when I lean this you can see the blue check goes on. So here it will be we will control the scale of our object. The left object has at the moment a scale of 0 0.1 so uh, 0 uh, 1.2 sorry and so the else will get those values so 0 0.2 uh, 1.2 and also 1.2 and the 10 output let's say 1.4 for x and also 1.4 for um, y. So and then we select the left card here at our scene, go to the right hand side and then extract the scale properties to our patch editor. Just click on the little arrow and we get the left scale properties in our patch editor. So now just connect the output of the if then else patch to the 3D scale and now when I lean my head to the left side this gets bigger. So then we do the same for the for the right side. So just copy and paste the if then else patch and connect the right lean state output of the head rotation patch to the condition input of the if then else patch. So leave the values as they are and then go to the cards, click on the right plane, go to the right hand side and also yeah, extract the scale property to the patch editor by clicking on the little arrow next to scale. So also connect the if output to the right input and now we can, yeah, we already have animated our cards. So now we want to um, create the selection pro process. So when we lean our head that, yeah, the next, um, next pair of, of decision appears 
Um, I will do it straightforward, so I will just do um, when I lean it to the left, the next ca comes up, when I lean to the right, also the next comes up. Um, I will not differentiate about left or right, but you can do this, of course, very simple. Let's start this. The first patch we need here is an R patch, so I, as I said, I will not differentiate, so it ma makes a difference if left or right. So to this uh, R to combine those two signals. The next thing we have to create is an animation pad. For this, the output of the R goes to the play input of the animation. And here we automatically get this parse, uh, parse patch. So this is very important because the off, um, the turn off output of this pulse patch goes into the stop of the animation. Then we also will create a delay patch and the turn off output of the pulse goes into the input of the delay. The duration we will set to 0.1 and the output of this delay goes into the reset input of our animation patch. So next thing is that we create a switch patch. Those um, patches I will create now are just for the logic left or right so that this is evaluated the right way. So the switch goes here and the completed output of the animation goes into the turn on of this switch patch. So and here at the turn off we will connect our delay output. Next thing is to add an end patch. Um, and here the switch output goes into one of those values and then we also have to connect our OR output to the second input of our AND patch. And now we are almost done. The next thing is to create a counter. And here when we get a signal here we want to increase our counter so we will connect the true output of the AND patch with the increase of the counter and it also will automatically create this pulse patch here for us. And now the output of the counter goes into the two inputs of the right and the left for the current frames. And because we have just four um, cards, we will set the maximum count to four here. So yeah, after we reached four, um, those start um, yeah, at the beginning. So and now we can already test our filter. Um, I will just restart my my filter here to make sure everything works perfectly. So when I lean my head, uh, when I lean my head to the left and select snowboard, it after one second it yeah, jumps to the next question. So here bar, IOS, and now here also skateboard, and you will see now it starts from the beginning. Um, I will tell you here some um, parameters you can change. For example, here the animation is the time the user has to lean at one side after, um, until the next frame comes up. So when you want to shorten this time, just set the duration here to 0.7. I think this is a good amount. And now after 0.7 seconds, it jumps to the yeah, next next card. So, so because this counter batch resets itself after have the maximum count of four, the cards start from the beginning. But normally you want to stop the filter or just show the user like something yeah, you did it or something like that. So let's program this logic. So this appears after we have yeah, come to our maximum count of four. So for this we will add a new patch, create a greater or equal patch. So the first input is the count and the second one is our amount of cards. So this is four. So after this counter reaches four, at the moment it doesn't, it don't do that because the maximum count is four. So when we reach four, it jumps back to five, uh, to zero. So we will set the maximum count to five. So here the output of the greater or equal patch goes into a switch input. And now we want to toggle the visibility of those two cards. I already have the cards in a null object, so I just need to control the cards property. So for this, we click on the cards null object, go to the right hand side, extract the visible property to the patch editor, and then we will connect the switch output to the visible of the cards, but not directly because we want to invert the signal. 
So we need a nut patch too. So when this is, yeah, at four, it will disable them, but we want, of course, to be visible from the start. So we need this um, nut patch. So now we can restart the filter and try it again. So after four times, so snowboard, bar, IS, longboard, the cards disappear and you can also show up another card like you did it or something like that. So yeah, I hope I could help you with this tutorial. If yes, give this a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!